Hello Green Stylers, Cynthia here and today I will be sharing with you a sewing tutorial for the Green Style Sky Tank and Dress. The version we'll make today will include the shelf bra with bra cup lining and burrito roll finishes. Here are the pieces you'll need to cut to make your sky tank again with a shelf bra with bra cup lining and burrito roll finishes. Cut one front piece labeled B1. Cut along the dotted line for less coverage or the solid line for more coverage. Choose from five lengths. I've cut the waist length here. Next is the back piece labeled B2. Again, pay attention to the more or less coverage lines of your choice and make sure you cut the same length that you cut for the front piece. To make the sky tank without a shelf bra, you can use the binding pieces included in the pattern and follow those instructions. Or you could cut two front and two back pieces in order to do the burrito roll method and that way you would have a completely lined sky tank without a shelf bra. But for this video we will be making a shelf bra. The shelf bra piece is labeled S1 and again you want to make sure to cut the same coverage that you cut for the main pieces. And the same goes for the back shelf bra labeled S2. Add piece S3 to your shelf bra if you'd like the option to slide bra cups in and out of your shelf bra. Again, being careful about those more or less coverage lines. Skip ahead to shoulder seam section if you won't be adding a bra cup liner to your shelf bra. We'll begin by laying the front shelf bra on the table with right side facing up and then we'll lay the bra cup liner on top of it also with right side facing up. Pin all along the outer edges. Our first stitch will be a basting stitch that begins at the top corner of the bra cup liner, comes across the arm side, down the side, and across the bottom. We'll make sure to leave these openings unstitched when we baste the two pieces together. Then we'll come back and stitch across the center and across the top with a stretch stitch. For now we're at the machine and we'll set it to the longest straight stitch. We're going to begin stitching again at the top outer corner of the bra cup liner right about here and we're going to baste that rounded arm side and then down the sides. Baste close to the edges about a quarter of an inch away from the edge works great and when you get to the side, you'll stitch down to that edge and then you can either end your stitch here and then start up again at the bottom of that rounded corner or you can just continue stitching straight down along the edge. What you don't want to do is close off that rounded opening because that's where you'll be sliding in your bra cup. Now that we've basted all along the outer edges of our shelf bra and bra cup liner, we're going to need to stitch across the top and down the center. The bra cups shouldn't move around as you wear them because the shelf bra should fit pretty snugly across your bust, but that center line will just help keep everything in place as you slide them in with your hands before you wear them and it'll give you a good guide as to where to place them. Right now, I'm just marking the center of the front shelf bra in order to give myself a stitching guide. These will need to be permanent stitches, so I like to use a zigzag stitch for this step. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end as you stitch across the top and down the center of that bra cup liner.
Here's a good look at the shelf bra piece with the bra cup liner attached. It's basted around these outer edges and then it's stitched with a stretch stitch across the top and down the center. If you're not using the bra cup liner, you'll just have a shelf bra piece without that additional pink piece. Align the front and back of the shelf bra at the shoulder seams and pin them together with right sides together. And we'll do the same for the main pieces. Again, I am using the waist length piece, but these steps are the same no matter what length you've chosen. Stitch using a stretch stitcher serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's how they'll look stitched up. If you used a sewing machine, you can iron those seams right open and have a nice flat seam on the inside of your shoulders. We're now going to finish that neck opening. Lay your pieces with right sides together on your table and line them up at the neck opening, making sure to align those seams on the shoulders. Pin the neck opening in place. Stitch the neck opening with a stretch stitcher serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now you can add some clear elastic to this seam if you'd like. It'll give you some extra support, especially if you have fabric that you're worried will pull and stretch open. My clear elastic is actually black. This is some swimsuit elastic and it'll function just the same way. While some people prefer to add the elastic at the same time as they serge the seam, I'll be adding it using my sewing machine after it's already been serged. Use a zigzag stitch and place your fabric with the main fabric facing up. You always want to attach the elastic to the main fabric. In addition, you want to align the elastic so that it all sits within the seam like this. Avoid allowing the elastic to drift down onto the shirt like this. We're not stretching the elastic as we attach it because that would create gathers, but we do want to hold it taut. Once you get back to the starting point, you can just overlap the beginning and end of the elastic by about a half an inch. Make sure to back stitch to lock your stitches and you're done. Let's take a quick look at what we've done so far. We have the shelf bra and the main finished at the neckline. Here it is from the main side and you can see the elastic is attached on the neckline. That is optional, of course. In order to get to the fun part, the burrito roll, we're gonna take these pieces and turn them right side out. And the way you do that is take the shelf bra and push the whole thing through that neck opening, shake out your shirt, and you have everything with right sides out now. And you can see that nicely finished neck opening.
Now what we use the burrito roll method for is to finish off these two arm openings. Right now the two pieces are laying with wrong sides together. In order to get them right sides together, we need to roll up half of the shirt, just like so. And we're gonna start at the bottom and roll up toward the arm side on the top. Now we're gonna take the shelf bra piece, which is currently laying with right sides down on the table, and we're going to bring it around and under so that it's right sides facing up, just like the main outer pieces are laying with right sides facing up. Now we have both the main and the shelf bra laying with right sides facing up, and we're simply going to flip that shelf bra so that the arm openings are now right sides together, and we're gonna pin all along that curved arm opening. Make sure to align the two pieces at the shoulder seams. Stitch this curved seam from here just to there with a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you can add clear elastic using the same exact method that you did for the neck opening but again that is optional only if you need some additional stability and support on that arm opening and here's that arm opening all stitched up and with elastic already attached now we're ready to move on to the other arm opening. Reach in between the main and lining pieces, it doesn't matter which side, and you're going to grab the strap and just pull the whole shirt through that strap. You may need to use a little bit of muscle power, a little bit of finagling, but it will come out. And now you can see and admire your beautiful finished edge using the burrito roll method. Now we're ready to move on to the other arm opening. Lay everything out nicely on your table once again with the unfinished arm opening away from you. Finishing the second arm opening is exactly the same as finishing the first. So roll up the shirt toward the opening and then you're going to take the shelf bra and flip it under to the front. So now both are right sides facing up. Tighten up that roll if you need to, and then you're going to flip the arm opening of the shelf bra over and on top of the arm opening of the main. So now we have right sides together of both arm openings. Again, align the corners and align the shoulder seam and pin that entire arm opening. Stitch with a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you can again add clear elastic if you'd like. And once again you'll reach inside and pull everything through that strap. In order to finish the side seams, we need to first separate the bodice from the shelf bra like this. And then we're gonna bring over and line up the shelf bra front with the shelf bra back and the bodice front with the bodice back at the side seams.
that I have here is the back opened up and laying on the table with right sides up and the front opened up and laying right sides down on the table. The shelf bra side seams are aligned and the main bodice pieces are aligned. All of the straps are just tucked away in the center right there. If you're doing a longer version, it's the same exact steps, but your pieces will be longer. Pin the two side seam pieces all the way from the bottom of the main bodice through the underarm seam, making sure to align those seams, and then all the way through the shelf bra. And now we have two long side seams to stitch up. Use a stretch stitcher serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Cut a piece of one and a half inch elastic to the length of the measuring chart in your tutorial, but I also recommend stretch it around your body and make sure it's a comfortable length. I have used so many different elastics that all have different properties. Some are, are a tighter stretch, some are a looser stretch, so you want to make sure that yours is comfortable and fits the way you like it. Form it into a loop and then stitch the ends together, overlapped by about a half inch or so. I like to use a wide zigzag stitch and just go back and forth a few times to secure that stitch. But you can also use a straight stitch and stitch an X shape to close the ends of that elastic. Then we'll mark the quarter points on the elastic and the quarter points on the bottom edge of the shelf bra. Pin the elastic to the wrong side of the shelf bra, that is the side with the seam that faces away from your body. The quarter points on the shelf bra aren't necessarily the side seams, so make sure to measure those as well. I'm using the side seams for mine because it's very close, but check yours to make sure. You can add additional pins in between those quarter points to make it easier for attaching the elastic, as I'm doing here. Stretch and pinch and then add a pin. Attach the elastic using a zigzag or serger. You'll be attaching it right to the bottom edge only at this point. Now we'll fold down the elastic one time toward the wrong side, just like so. And now you can use a zigzag stitch or a cover stitch to stitch that elastic in place. You will be stitching right over the first stitches that you made to attach the elastic.
to hem, I've drawn a line double the hem allowance from the bottom edge. So we have a one inch hem allowance. I've drawn a line two inches away from the bottom edge, then folded the bottom edge to the line and ironed in place. And that way I can avoid using pins or clips in order to hem my bottom. You can use a cover stitch or a stretch stitch on your sewing machine to hem your bottom edge. And that's it, you've completed your sky tank or dress. It is such an easy way to make a beautifully finished top. I really love this method. Let your creativity flow and you can make so many different styles and looks using the sky tank pattern. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to use hashtag GS Sky Tank when posting across social media. We'll be on the lookout and can't wait to see your beautiful sky tanks and dresses. Happy sewing from all of us at Green Style.